Hey guys, it's Rebecca, and I am so excited about today's video. We're going to be talking all about how to keep track of projects in my planner system. Um, but first, I have to tell you, today's video is a collaboration with Annie Smith. I love Annie. She um, was actually in my August 2019 favorites video, so you can check that out if you're interested later. Um, she's just a really awesome, genuine YouTuber. So cool. Um, she's a homeschooling mom of, I want to say, five kids, um, and she posts videos all about homeschooling sometimes, all about her planner system, and really her focus is not just on how pretty it can be, though her traveler's notebooks are very pretty, um, but about the functionality and about teaching other people how to get their lives organized. Her videos have been so helpful to me and I really like aspire to be her <laughs> in a lot of ways and I'm so excited that she agreed to do this collab with me. Um, she's going to be showing you how she organizes her projects in her planner system as well and that's what I'm going to be doing also. So I know you're going to love her and definitely check out her video when this one is over. If you came here from Annie's channel, hi, my name's Rebecca. I go by Ganchi here on YouTube, and uh, I post videos about planners too. I also uh, post videos about just lifestyle topics, parenthood and motherhood and baby stuff, and you know, just general lifestyle type videos. I post videos twice a week, so Thursday is all this planner stuff, and then on Sunday is kind of a grab bag of everything else. So let's get down to it. First of all, what is a project? What are we talking about when we're saying project? Well, I kind of go by the David Allen definition. Um, I read his book, Getting Things Done, a year, couple years ago. And um, well, there are some things about that video, or sorry, I, I made a video about it. There's some things about that book I kind of take issue with. I think the understanding or like the basic underlying idea makes a lot of sense. Basically what he says is anything that has multiple steps is a project. So unload the dishwasher is probably a task, but like do the dishes might be a project, depending obviously <laughs> on how much you need out of your planner for a given week or for just a lifestyle thing. Maybe putting the dishes in the sink and then in the dishwasher and then unloading them and putting them away. That's all just second nature to you or maybe you really feel like you need to write down each individual step or else it's not gonna get done. That's a bad example, obviously. Uh, we're gonna be talking about all the different kinds of projects that I have going on in here. Basically, yeah, if you're looking forward to something, you probably don't need a lot of planning for it. Um, but if it's something you're dreading, then having really small baby steps, it can be really useful. I uh, have been doing this at work lately. Some of the tasks that I've been putting off for a long time, I just turned into projects. And so instead of, you know, get tasks, you know, get big project done uh, on my list, I now have a little next action items section that says like, find the website that you need. Like just really simple and easy. Let's just call that the next action item. <laughs> And then that feels a lot more manageable. So that's another David Allen topic or term, next action items. And so that's what I use in here. So basically what I want to do is number one, remember what projects I'm working on. Number two, keep the next action items for all of those projects in a handy spot where I won't lose them. And then number three, remember to go back to my project pages and pull out the next action item once I've done one of them. So, uh, first off, I want to remember what I'm doing. Um, I have moved a lot of my projects out of my main ring planner into this guy. Um, if you're new here, this is Arthur. He is a pocket-sized Filofax Malden in the color ochre. And this is Hermione, and she is a, a mini-size happy planner. It's kind of a happy notes, technically, because it's just the note pages, but I have a couple um, things in here that are uh, printables. So this is what I use for my content planning, but it's also what I use for a lot of my project tracking, basically because I find that I prefer the size of these pages, and a lot of these projects are things that I have to do at home anyway. This is my out and about everyday carry. I never thought I'd be a two planner person, but this is where I am right now at the beginning of 2020. So uh, to remember what projects I'm working on, I'm going to show you my sticky note index. This is something I started actually in here, you can see as well. 
This is my sticky note index, but this section is really just for reference. There's not a lot of projects that I keep in this planner. Um, but basically the idea is with a ring planner and with a disk bound system, there's no page numbers because you can move things around all the time. And so in order to remember what order all of the stuff is in, because this is a pretty thick comparatively, there's a lot of things going on in here. So I keep a sticky note with each one. And then if I finish an insert or finish a project or want to move them around, I can just remove these or move them. And then that just is a quick way for me to like look in the front and go, oh, okay, my to watch list is after the library books. It's somewhere in the middle and then I can find it. All right. For example, so I've done the same thing here uh, with the projects tab in my content planner. Um, and so these are the three projects that I'm working on like at home right now. So I've got here my backyard plans and some space for note taking. I'm hiding the channel stuff for you, but this is a, a bridal shower that I have to throw for my brother and his fiance. Um, and so I need, I've just put like the skeleton of a project page here because the next action item for this I'll show you in a little bit is to like schedule an actual planning meeting. So that's one place I know um, where all of my projects are because they're all right here on this one list. The other main thing that this planner is for is for my content planning. That's what the front section is. I've covered up one that's a surprise but this is basically what my content schedule is looking like for the next you know month. Uh, this is all January and then February. And so this is just one page I can flip to. It's right in the very front. So I know I need to know what's coming up next. Um, you know, I'm, I'm working currently on this one and then I know which one I have to work on next after that. It's always good to have, you know, a list of projects that you're working on. Then I also wanted to show you uh, going back and forth here. This is already used up, but I still have it in here. Um, this is a six week project planning um, insert printable from my Summer Touch. And I really like this thing. It's kind of overkill, especially because this project was not that involved, but it was something that I um, was feeling kind of stressed about because the, the pantry was just, it was a mess. Um, we had an ant move in and so things have just, from combining everyone in the kitchen, gotten a little bit out of hand and I need to just reorganize the pantry. So I took this insert, I wrote a couple notes about like why I wanted to fulfill the goal and what it entailed and what success looked like and all of this. And then every week you write out like your goals for that week and then at the end of the week you can write a sort of how well it went and what you're going to do for the next week. This is a really cool little insert. I really like it. I've showed it a couple times on my channel before. Um, it was definitely a little bit overkill for this project, but it did work really well. So if you're looking for a really in-depth project page, instead of just having a you know piece of paper with some notes on it, that's a good option for you. I also I just have one project in my main planner, and that is a monthly focus goal and I currently have it right here. Um, this is like one to-do page, and I showed all of this in my February setup video from last week, or from earlier this week. So this is like one project page in the very front. So I'm flipping through this section all the time, so I see this all the time. This is the one project, it's small, but it's something I'd like to get done in February. So that's right here, and there's a couple of steps that I've written out, and I can add more to it as I think of them or as something maybe needs to be broken down further. So that's where that is. And then my next action items list is currently looking like this. Um, basically, this is just a catch all of things that need to get done right now. Um, and the idea is for this list to only be tasks. Nothing on here should need to be broken down further. That doesn't always exactly work, but that's the idea. And you'll notice two of these little tasks have dots next to them. What that means to me is that these aren't standalone tasks. These are next action items from a project. So research DG, that's decompose granite, that is on my backyard landscaping project, which is a long-term thing. 
I've had this task on my to-do list for months now, but that's one thing that needs to get done for a project. So basically the idea is once I've done that thing, I need to go back to the project page and decide what the next step is after this task. Same things here. I need to schedule shower planning call. So I know that once I have scheduled it, then I'll put it somewhere else. Like I know that it needs to go somewhere. In that case, it'll go onto a schedule because it's a timed thing. And then once we've had that meeting, I'll hopefully have some actionable items from here that will go back on here with dots next to them, which remind me to check back in with my project page after I've done the task, if that makes sense. And then finally, I have a couple places uh, in my planner system for future projects so that you know like what's coming up. Um, for one thing, I have a someday maybe list. This is another element of the GTD system. And I've been trying to make a point of grabbing one of these um, off, because some of these are like definitely maybes, but others are definitely some days, um, things that I would like to do and some sooner than others. So um, I've made a point of grabbing one of these. You'll notice this is this week's monthly goal. Um, so I'm trying to work on these as monthly goals. So this is just a place to, to store potential projects that I can make current projects. Obviously, I've got a page in here with video ideas. I'm not going to show it to you right now, but it's just a piece of paper with a list of video ideas. Um, I used to keep a um, a 52 week insert that I got from Peanuts Planner Co. in here. Um, I don't have a copy printed out right now and I don't want to waste paper just to show you, but basically it had a line for each week of the year. Um, and sometimes when I feel a little bit overwhelmed by how many projects I have coming up, um, I like to like sit down and just prioritize them and try to put like one per week and then put them in, you know, the order they need to get done. Maybe there's deadlines involved or maybe some of them are just more important than others. And scheduling out like what I'm going to be working on this week and then next week, it helped me for a while when that was what I needed. I think currently what's sort of filling that goal is this Gantt chart. I did a video about this as well. I think I still have an annotation free to show you. Um, this is a new productivity tool to me. It's super old apparently, um, but I'd never heard of it until recently. And basically the X axis is time and the Y axis is um, items, I don't know, tasks, projects. I think it can be pretty much as granular as you want it to be. Um, basically I just have it as deliverables for you know videos blog posts and newsletters um, and then I just sort of I highlight the span of time that I want to be working on something so this is kind of helping me prioritize things and know that like all right I want things to be pretty light next week because we're going on vacation so I'm going to double up on some stuff now and you see, you know, I, I try to work on multiple things at once I try to work on things for about a week before they're due on average so this just helps me visualize things really well as far as how many projects I'm working on at once. And this is all specifically just for my videos, but I can do that also um, for other things in my life. And I actually have space for that. This month, the insert I'm using for my monthly has a habit tracker and I am not in a habit tracking place right now in my planner life. So um, I could use this tracker as a Gantt chart as well and just sort of maybe put notes about what... Uh, what different items or projects or whatever I'm working on and I can kind of plan them out and say, all right, I'm going to spend this week focusing just on project A and then next week on project B. And then finally, obviously, you can schedule a project. For example, my mother-in-law has an important birthday this year in August. And so I have a note on my July future log plan mom's birthday. So that's just, you know, a way to remind myself when it needs to happen, what's going to happen. So that is it. That's how I take um, all of my projects and put them into a manageable system for me and keep track of things so that I don't forget things and fall behind and also don't feel overwhelmed by what I do have. Because I find a lot of times if I have a lot of projects, maybe I really only need to be working on one or two right now. But because I don't have all of them scheduled or placed in the right place, then I don't feel like I have it under control. 
And that's why having a planner system that you can trust, that you know that the thing is going to be in front of you when it needs to be, um, then, you know, when you have that system set up, then you can just feel a lot better about life generally doing what you need to get done and nothing more. So I hope that that was helpful for you. Um, and yeah, please comment below if you have any other tips or questions or concerns or whatever. And now that you've watched this video, if you have not yet, please do go check out Annie's video. Um, she's also going to be talking about how she organizes all of her projects and I am super excited to watch her video. Um, I know that her content's just going to be fantastic because she just, well, she seems to have it all put together, but I'm sure that she's just like the rest of us and feels like she's floundering all the time as well. But I'm really excited to see what she has to show us. So go ahead and check. There's a link to her um, video down in the description as well as in the corner. And if you are new to her, go ahead and subscribe to her channel. You won't be disappointed, I promise you. If you're new to me, hi, welcome. Thank you for watching the whole thing. Please consider subscribing to my channel. Like I said, I post videos twice a week on Thursdays and Sundays on planner and general lifestyle topics. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one on Thursday. Bye.